Our gospel reading is from the gospel according to Mark. We'll be reading from chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. If you'd like to follow along, you can find it on page 34, the back section of your Red Pew Bible. Mark 1, 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And the voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Gracious God, give us ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts that are open to receive and respond to your word, your message to us this day. Amen. So last evening, a group of us gathered downstairs to enjoy a delicious potluck dinner and watch a critically acclaimed movie called The Way, starring Martin Sheen and directed by his son, Emilio Estevez. I highly recommend watching this film, especially during the season of Lent. California-based eye doctor Tom Avery has had a strained relationship with his only son, late 30-something Daniel Avery, ever since the death of Tom's wife and Daniel's mother. That strain is due to the differences in their outlooks. Daniel feels that Tom, his dad, doesn't really live in his standard life. He's not really living. He's just going through the routines. While Tom feels that his son Daniel has no focus, the latest point of contention being Daniel's decision to quit his postgraduate studies in order to find himself. The initial process being to hike on his own the 800-kilometer El Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James. Tom heads to Europe himself upon the news that Daniel was killed in an accident on the first day of his pilgrimage in the French Pyrenees. In his grief, Tom, upon the suggestion of Captain Henry, who was in charge of the case, decides to have Daniel's body cremated, not to bring the remains back to California, but by using Daniel's largely untouched gear to do the pilgrimage as father and son together. Tom spreading the ashes at key points along the way. This decision is despite Tom's advanced age, not having prepared physically for such a grueling hike, and being a lapsed Catholic himself. Inexperienced and unprepared as a trekker, Tom soon discovers that he will not be alone on this journey. For on this journey... On this way of St. James, Tom meets other pilgrims from around the world. Each pilgrim with their own story, their own reason for being on this journey. Each looking for greater meaning and purpose in their lives. Throughout the movie, as they journey together from town to town, village to village, through mountains and desert and wilderness, each pilgrim and passerby will say these words, Buen Camino, like a good walk, a good hike, a good journey, a good way. And along the way, Tom discovers the meaning of one of the last things that his son ever said to him, that there is a difference between the life we live and the life we choose. 
The theme for our Lenten journey this year is the way. Following the way of Jesus over these 40 days and beyond. In the scripture passage for the first Sunday in Lent that is read around the world on this Sunday, we read the story that Jesus was led, or more accurately translated, Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit. That same Spirit that he received in his baptism that affirmed him of God's love, that same Spirit then drove him out into the wilderness. Presumably, it was not a place that he wanted to go to, nor something he had planned or prepared to do similar to the character Tom Avery. It wasn't on his radar. He didn't want to have to go out to Europe. Jesus didn't want to have to go into the wilderness, but he was prompted. He was led to do so. From Jesus' example, we learn where we must begin our journey of Lent. We must begin these 40 days by going to a wild place a wild and untamed place in ourselves or in our lives that might even contain some wild beasts. You know, these things that we just can't control. We try to avoid them. We try to destroy them. But sometimes there's things in life and circumstances we cannot control. How do we deal with that? What emotions stir within us when we face ourselves with something that is out of our hands completely? Those are the wild beasts in our lives, and we all face them. And Lent is a time for us to acknowledge that they're there. Yes, we might like if they were not there, but they are. And we go and we sit with them for a while. Sarah Parsons, in her devotional, A Clearing Season, which is the book that we are studying during our online Lenten series, writes these words. If we are fiercely honest with ourselves as we begin a Lenten journey towards greater openness, we must start by seeing things we would rather not see. If we are to fall in the way of Jesus, then heading into the wilderness is important and it's not to be avoided or overlooked. We live in a culture where we try to avoid pain at all costs or anything that makes us uncomfortable. But ultimately, that doesn't help us grow in any way. It doesn't help us to mature in faith or in relationships or in life. And so we have to be willing and open to be led to the wilderness in those wild places. Now, throughout the Bible, the wilderness is often a metaphor for those places that we don't want to go. When life seems barren and the road seems hard and we seem to be wrestling with evil all around us. But rather than running from the wilderness... Jesus stays there a while in order to fully experience its many lessons. The hymn that we just sang talked about the 40 days. We read that Jesus was there for 40 days. The number 40 in the biblical text is symbolic. This 40 days, this 40 years, it always means a long time. So whenever you see the word 40, it means a long time. If you were to hike the Camino, you could do the full Camino in about 40 days. But that is a long time to be on a journey. In the Christian tradition, Lent is a long time set apart to clear away the clutter. It's a time of self-reflection, time of inward cleansing. It's a time to participate in spiritual practices that are meant to, to 
awaken us from perhaps our winter slumber in hibernation. These Lent practices are ancient and they're helpful for us. A a few practices to consider this year. To consider incorporating into your rhythms, into your teens, could include silence, which is also uncomfortable. But how much silence do we actually have in our lives? Probably not much. 10, 15 minutes a day of silence. Walking a labyrinth, which we may do again together as a community later in Lent. Walking some of the Stowe Land Trust trails. Hiking in the woods. Practicing breathing. Becoming more aware of how your body responds to slowing down. Maybe reciting a life-giving verse or a mantra as you breathe. Something that's different. Offering your time and service to others. Being more generous. And yes, of course, some may choose to fast. But Lent isn't just about giving up chocolate or caffeine or meat. There's much more to it than that. But speaking of fasting, did you know that fasting by the monastic communities was designed to generate extra income to buy food for the poor and for the homeless. By not eating a normal ration, they could save money and or food to give to those with greater needs. That was the point of fasting in the monastic community. That, yes, it could draw them closer to God, But for what purpose? So that they would draw closer to others and reach out with compassion. So while any of these spiritual practices that we might do this season of Lent might be good and even healthy for us personally, and there's nothing wrong with that, they are even better if they inspire us to be more loving and more compassionate towards our neighbors and to those with needs in our community. So here's an idea. Go without one meal a week so that you can help or provide one meal for the Lamoille Community House. Don't go out to dinner one time and use those funds to support their work. Or fast from a meal so that you and your family can make a meal together and bring it to them. That's what this is all about. That's what this season of Lent can mean that it can be life-giving to us and to others. So all of these things are the way of Jesus. These are all the ways of Jesus. Compassion, kindness, generosity, prayer, fasting. They help us to connect with God and connect with others. But for Jesus, it all began in the wilderness. In the wilderness, like Jesus, we will be tempted. We will encounter forces, sometimes powerful forces, internal and external, that seem unfamiliar and unpredictable, that want to steer us in a different path, get us off of the way that we should go. And like Jesus, the Spirit may give us a push, a nudge, into some new and unfamiliar terrain. The way ahead may be rough and rugged. It may be unmarked or even beyond the boundaries of our comfort. And though the way is personal for everyone, and in a sense... It is an individual and deeply intimate experience for each one of us. As it was for those pilgrims in the movie, for pilgrims who journey the El Camino, everyone has a different reason for that. We are all on a different journey. 
this season of Lent. The good news is that we are not alone along the way. When Jesus says, repent and believe the good news, that is part of it. That in this life, we are not alone. We are never alone. The word repent means to change one's mind. To do a 180, to change your mindset. Believing that life is solitary. Believing that we do this journey of life by ourselves. Or that life is all about ourselves is not the reality. Life is far more than just us. And we are not alone. In a Lenten wilderness, our needs, like Jesus, will also be met by many fellow travelers, pilgrims, and sometimes these special messengers of God. All of these angels sent by God to encourage us along the way. Pastor Fred Craddock wrote these words. Ash Wednesday begins the Lenten journey to Jerusalem. The way is often desert, but the destination holds most meaning for those who make the trip. And since the way is often desert, it is best not to journey alone. And so, as I look around, I see a community, I see a family. We are all on our different journey. We are all on a different path, but we are all following the way. We all need one another. We're all here for each other. We know that we are not alone. We have each other, and we have God's presence, God's provision, God's protection in the way. This past week on Ash Wednesday... As members of St. John's and the Mountain were here as well. Part of our service, we read the Stowe Community Church Statement of Faith, which was adopted in 2004. Here are the opening and the closing lines of this Statement of Faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.